We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm your host, Kim Warner with Kim's Universe, and I have Ashley Townsend and Jan Jasmine Tony. Well, can't you hear Mercury retrograde going on in my vocabulary? I'm trying to straighten that out. That's why we're talking about the throat chakra right now. So um, we're actually going to work from a book that um, myself, Ashley, and uh, my daughter uh, created about three, four, no, about six months ago, I believe. And um, it goes through the chakra system as we uh, discussed in the past. We hadn't received the finished pro product because my daughter is a designer. And so this perfectionist type of energy got into her, which is normal. And um, so we are at the finished product where we can actually make orders. And so this book is going to educate us on self-development within our temple. Um, also to speak those things as though we are as though they are. It's, it's scriptural, but it's also advancement for temple building because we have in here um, the chakras. We also have stones that go along with the chakras, which we've discussed and are biblical in Revelations. You can find it in other um, chapters as well if you go back and listen to some of the videos, right? Um, because I'm not going to school you on that, but um, I'm going to let my dear darlings charm in and give their uh, thoughts on discussing this topic, the throat chakra. Who's starting first? Go oh, ahead, Jazzy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first. Whew, the throat chakra. Whew, I am very, very familiar with um, the throat chakra because for the longest time, I wasn't able to speak up for myself. I wasn't able to speak my truth or tell others how I feel. And now I do it with ease. <laughs> um, I, I still do struggle because for the longest time, my main form of communicating was writing everything down, was writing it in my diary, writing it in a journal or writing it via poems or, um, yeah, poems or songs or just being creative, a creative writing. That's how I expressed myself for the longest. And so when it turned into me learning how to speak up for myself or just speak in general it was really really difficult and I had really really um moments where I've had uh where I would get like a, a, something caught in my throat or I would get a sore throat or I would get sick um I even had laryngitis so uh clearing those blocks in your throat chakra and like it's activating now because I feel it clearing those blocks in my throat chakra really really helped me um e express myself uh I made myself talk even when I didn't want to. Uh, when I was recording, I made myself speak and look at the camera even when I didn't feel like it, even when I was scared. So it helped. Ashley, okay, um, Jazz, those are some good thoughts and pointers and also ways for people to identify because I heard you say the, that you can feel the activation. So when something is going on and also um, having coughing symptoms, it's not just you having a cold or symptoms in the throat, it can be a clearing or purification. So Ashley, why is it important to know what's going on with your throat chakra? So in contrast to Jasmine, I had no problem using my throat chakra. Um, I grew up with a family where we communicated about everything. When we got in trouble, we all sat around and discussed why we were in trouble and what our punishment was going to be and how long. And so coming from that type of upbringing, <clears throat> where other people wouldn't talk, I couldn't understand, like, why, why aren't you talking to me? Why aren't you telling me what's wrong? And I had to learn that there, be, there needs to be a balance. And I still struggle with knowing when to balance um, being quiet versus talking. And it's actually something that I'm learning to teach my daughter that we don't have to talk all the time. We don't always have something to say. Sometimes we're just silent and we process and we understand and we observe. The reason why communication is so important, um, you, 
people can't read your mind. <laughs> like people don't know what's going on with you if you're not able to talk about it. But it's not just being able to talk about it. You have to get in tune with yourself because sometimes you don't even know what's going on. So sometimes, like Jasmine said, you have to journal because you have to figure it out for yourself. I'll say personally, my first reaction when everything, anything happens is I get mad. But I'm not really mad, but I get mad. And then once I go, okay, this is not really anger. Is this disappointment? Oh, it is disappointment. Why am I disappointed? And sometimes that conversation is with my journal. Sometimes that conversation is out loud to myself, which that's fine. You can think I look crazy. I, sometimes I need to consult with an expert. And the only person that knows me is me. So I got to talk to her. And you go through this process and when you finally figure it out, that's when you tap into yourself again. Like on the previous recording that I did with Miss Kim, with Nicole, getting quiet, centering with yourself, understanding what is going on so that you're so connected with yourself and source that you can figure it out. And then when you speak to people, you might stutter, you might jumble your words, but you're clear enough in your mind to be able to effectively communicate what you're feeling, why you're feeling it, and why you may or may not like it. And that's not easy. It's not something that you do overnight. Personally, like I said, I still struggle. Sometimes I get mad and you're getting me being reactionary. Do I have to apologize? Absolutely, especially if it happens with my daughter because I think that that's important, number one, like complete side note, I think it's important to apologize to your children when you do something incorrectly. But I also think that it's acknowledging like, hey, I did this and I reacted and I don't want you to do it. I want you to understand that sometimes we have to get quiet, we have to think and we have to process. Because communication isn't so much outward as it is inward before it becomes outward. All right, so let's let's start. Um, Jazz, do you feel like reading or should we get the communicator to do it? Uh, we, we should start the communicator. <laughs> communicate. And then I'm going to explain to everyone the communicator versus, let's say the external versus the internal. The, in, into, the internal aspects of a person um, being that they might be um, introvert and extrovert. So we got two introverts at times and there's a blend because Jazz and I, let me just go into that. Jazz and I are, we can be both, right? I can be definitely introvert. Um, I talk to people about learning situations and then I'm done because if it's not worth speaking about, I don't want to do it. So, you know, pray for me. But, um, and that's also in humor because I know some people are back there laughing right now. But jazz will be a blend of me and Ashley. And in my classes, um, Ashley learned how external communication needs to, to listen. So we have a lot to give in this throat chakra because the throat chakra can be overactive and underactive. All right, um, Miss External Communicator, put it on them. I'm, I'm just verifying I am reading from our, from our book right now, correct? Okay, the common name for paragraph. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Okay. The common name for throat chakra is pure or purification. Pureness can remind us of virtue and clarity. The throat is blue, and it is the wheel within each of us that prompts communication and information. Communication and information flow through the air as a sound vibration from one person to another. Give me a second. The throat chakra transmits our words through frequencies, which our ears pick up on through feeling. Our ears translate the frequency into words so that we're able to converse, com, conversate and express our feelings. When this sock, sock, chakra excuse me, is imbalanced, there can be equilibrium challenges, ear aches, sore throat, negative spoken word, and unhealthy communication. Right. Some affirmations that you can use I trust and surrender to the universe. I trust myself. I am speaking wisely. I communicate with passion. I communicate effectively. Right. And so before we go into the scripture, the communication of effectiveness uh, or effectively 
And also using affirmations brings us to a place where we realize that something is going on with our communication, rather it be um, overexerted or underexerted, meaning that some people can talk so much that they're not listening to others. And, you know, I have a book called Dance With Your Partner, Not Their Confusion. And that's when I found that I was in relationships, friendships, partnerships, professional um, um, communities where people were talking over each other. Um, and we become angry about this, but it's because that individual has has the technique of using what they have. I speak, I, I am that word, right? They don't know that they are actually blending other people out of the conversation and making it just them. Um, sometimes people get upset because you're not talking to them, but they don't leave room for you to talk to them. So this is a very extensive um, area because in relationships, and that's what we are, we're in relationships in life, period. And, and life means that we need to have ears to hear. And so the best practice I found is learning to hear myself through hearing God. And that's where I began to pray. Did I just pray about my communication? No, I prayed about every area that my life was being hit or adversity was in. And the adversity was there because I had no knowledge. I was ignorant to how to make it better. So as we move on in life, our affirmations and our scriptures are for us to make it better. I was listening to one of a, a old pastor preacher who was dynamic in his time, um, Reverend Ike yesterday. And Reverend Ike was saying um, that you know, it's something that I heard in the spirit and I felt the confirmation where he came up in my feed and I needed to listen to that even further because he said, pray for yourself. And God had told me um, back, this was over 30 years ago. He said, you, you don't need to pray for others. You need to pray for yourself because when you change, then everything changes. And that is for the better. So we are taught differently. Now, why am I talking about prayer? Because prayer is an affirmation. Prayer is a scripture. And it's about me. While I have eyes to see externally every problem that's going on with everyone, my words need to be brought back to me because I am judging others. Now, when I bring my words back to me and I have knowledge of what the word of God is saying, what happens is, is that I become the light that's supposed to shine. And I, be, I become aware of even words that I'm saying to others that is not productive or lines up with the scripture. I think we're all working on that yet. You know, I think that we're all coming into humility when it comes to speaking. Um, our words can trap us. These are scriptures. Here is Ephesians 4 and 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to be used of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So back in that time, listen, I'm not making myself special, but I have to be special in my own eyesight to say that I really don't like to talk other than to edify. And yes, in my classes, the people laugh because I bring humor there. That's part of them having an excitement, not just for the class, but just being in there because we all bring the light to a situation. And my, my, my thoughts would be, what is your situation? Where are you bringing the light, right? So let no corrupt. And then you got to ask yourself, what is corrupt? See, a lot of times we're learning things about ourselves, but we're not specifying what this means to us. Of course, someone has told us what corrupt is and communication. But why is all the world having issues with communication if we read this scripture? And many people have read 4 and 29 of Ephesians. Some have not. Let me tell you why some have not. Some have not read the Bible or do not want to read the Bible because of the judgment in the circumstances or if they went to church, how they felt when they went to church. Is that saying that we shouldn't go? No, it's saying get right church, get right. Now, in order to get right church, get right, it's not with the congregation. The church itself is you. It's me as a temple shining my light 
to edify and bring glory to God on an individual level and then bring it on collective. The number one power that we have is in our mouths to speak or to tear down. All right, so I think that I'm going to let Jasmine come on in and add. Yes, the, one of the biggest things that I had to learn for myself, especially when I was started using my voice is to watch the words that I say. And I became extremely conscious about the words that I would speak over myself or the words that I would speak over others, especially if I was like, you know what, I can't do this. And then I'm like, wait, I can do it. It's just that, and then I would, then I would be like, oh, well, it's difficult. And I'm like, wait, no, it's not difficult. It's easy. So I'm like doing those things, it's it's a process because I still catch myself now where I'll be like, I can't do that. Or I'll say something on the lines of, um, a lot of people say this, I'm broke. Yes. Especially when, when it's, when it's, when it's pertaining to money, I'm broke or um, my funds is funny. So I, what I learned to say is, um, you know what, my blessing ain't here yet. It, it, it hasn't, it hasn't hit my bank account yet, but it's on its way. <laughs> Instead of saying that I'm broke because the I'm broke has so many meanings, has so many levels. It has so much depth to that. You're broken what? You're broke which way? Are you broke mentally? Are you broke physically? Are you broke spiritually? Are you broke emotionally? Um, so I had to reprogram myself and take that word out of my vocabulary so like when people say that I'm like you're not broke I think um also to add what I always think about um when I talk too much because I have to catch myself um I think we all remember like God gave you two ears and one mouth so you will listen more than you speak um I frequently remind that to myself when I catch myself talking too much, I said, you have two ears, ma'am. Why are you not listening to what this person is saying to you? Why are you not hearing and paying attention to? And I also taught myself there's a difference between hearing and listening. When you hear somebody, that's me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you're listening, you're paying attention. You have the eye contact and you're acknowledging them and you're really processing what they're saying to you. Um, and that was something that I also had to learn, which is active listening, to be actively a part of a conversation without speaking so that someone is aware that she's paying attention, she's hearing what I'm saying, and I'm, I'm able to acknowledge my thoughts, my fears, my feelings, whatever they're expressing to me. Um, I still find myself sometimes, unfortunately, with my daughter, she's nine and the conversation will start at when I got to school this morning and then somehow we end in the car when I've just picked her up midway through, I have stopped listening and I am just hearing her and I'm like, mm -hmm, okay, baby. Mm -hmm, all right. And it's, it's a work in progress, but I think a lot of people lose the active listening part to communication. And it's something, like I said, I learned that I needed to deal with because if you're not paying attention to what someone's saying to you, you're not an effective communicator either. Right, so um, brilliant, brilliant points. Uh, I want to add that hearing and uh, hearing is consciousness. You see, the reason why we don't hear is a consciousness that has been absent and we have to bring it back into focus. That means that even as we talk about a chakra system, the reason why we're talking about it is because there's an awakening that's needed in our communication, but it can't come unless our ears become aware that they're supposed to respond a, a certain way. Um, there is a scripture, I think it's around uh, Psalms 45 that I have gave to my group and I was saying it and I've said it over the years. It says, my tongue is a ready writer pen indicting the matters of the king. See, if you say that for 30 days, something about your vernacular is going to change. Um, when I say consciousness, every part of us, our blood must become conscious. And that's why family blood is different from the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus heals, but family blood does not. Don't dispute what I'm saying. But if you read the Bible, you understand the blood heals because there's an awareness that 
through the genetics, there's a spiritual component called the blood of Jesus. And that's what Jesus spoke about, that when we become aware, healing takes place in any area of our life. Before it happens, it must resonate within our blood. It transforms the blood. John 2 talks about the wine being transformed. The other part is consciousness awakens you to your ability to become not just a child of God, but grow up as a God. You can't just remain a child forever. So your communication with yourself, number one, is more important. And I say number one because that's the point over there, number one. That's the point over there, number one. Ain't no one, two, and three. Number one right now, the point is you become aware of what you've been saying. The young man that was shot last week, we could say a whole lot of things, but I guarantee you one fact could be that the man was afraid. But the other fact that could be is that racism is big and people are afraid of us. And if we could get the communication changed within racism, we speak differently about each other. The, the violence can change. Now, I'm not going to say with guns because people use guns. That means that people need to be uh, trained and transformed consciously when it comes to guns. You don't have to take a gun away. They need to be conscious of what they're doing with the gun. Now, that's one factor in a way to look at it. But the fact of the matter that there's a scripture that says, they that have ears, let them hear. God knows that we are not listening. It's been a long time before we even decided to come back to our father, coming back home. We have been a prodigal child. Now we're looking at growing up, but the only way to grow up is they that have ears, let them hear. And they that have ears are going to go through a conscious change to submit and come to the father. So you, you see all of this voice? In the beginning, God said, everything is about your voice. It's so important. What you say can heal, build, or it can tear you down. The power is in you. You know, we know the scripture that said that life and death is in the power of tongue, but here we are explaining it. You build yourself and your kingdom up within you. Your kingdom comes in contact with my kingdom through our voice and the things that we speak spiritually. We're not here creating a kingdom as human beings. That's slavery as we work. That's slavery. We go to the father and the father says, okay, I'm going to give you this. Now, I know that there are some things that we do have to do, but not as hard. We work hard because we choose to by the laboring and the sweat of our brow. Listen to it. The other thing is, is that we have been uh, trained to work. When will we be trained to enjoy? When we open our mouths and begin to know how to talk to ourselves and talk to our God. Yes. I know you want to, I know you're praying. I know everyone is praying. But I ain't praying about suffering every day. I'm praying about it, writing those things as though they are. I'm writing it out. I'm writing out the plan. And that's what we teach. So you could get this book. $15.99. You can email me. You can email Ashley. We are the writers. Jazz got a, um, another book that she added some things in. We'll talk about that. The wonderful thing about it is these are young women who are adding to life in a way that I don't think they ever thought they could. It's a beautiful thing. When you add to life and you say, I want to change myself, you're adding to yourself, your own life. And you're saying, OK, there is something in me that I need to change. That's why things ain't working out. It's not because I'm a bad person. It's because I'm like the, the, the children going around uh, the mountain. I keep doing the same thing. And that's mm -hmm. the key. Awareness is there. You realize something. Now, train and discipline yourself differently. All right. Go ahead, ladies. Go ahead, Ashley. I really didn't know I had. This I was question. just gonna say, um, reading your book, Miss Kim, "Dance with Your Partner." Um, of course, people always look outside themselves, and I said, "But I'm my partner, right?" So I need to get out of my own confusion 
And one of the, that was the biggest thing for me. Where am I confused? Where am I losing myself and working too hard? Overcompensating for something that I don't have to overcompensate for. Showing up in ways where, nope, I'm here. I'm good. I'm okay. I don't have to overdo it for somebody to notice. So it was, of course, you know, first time reading it, my mindset went to the relationships outside of me. But then when I sat with it, I said, none of this is outside of me. I am my own partner. And if I get out of my own confusion, my relationships are easier. Work, any relationship is much easier. That doesn't mean you get it all figured out the first time around because I still run into challenges daily. But I've learned like, okay, take a pause, take a minute. You don't have to react right away. Okay, wait a minute. Do you really need to say something or is somebody going to figure out all by themselves? Because if you're always figuring it out for them and giving them the answers, you create codependency and we can't operate that way. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I like yes, the I just word heard. watch. Yeah. Watch your words. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. Uh Watching my words would play a major, major part, but also working with you because you used to always tell me, well, did you tell them how you felt? And I'm like, no. Or I'd say I tried to, and it didn't start coming. I didn't start seeing the bigger picture until I was like, I am going around the same mountain. I am repeating the same cycle of me not being able to speak up for myself. And I can I have the ability to, I have a voice, I could use my voice. And so I was like, okay, well, do I want to continue the cycle and be consciously and consciously know that I'm continuing the cycle and I continue to go around this mountain or do I want to do something different? Because Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and, and expecting a different outcome. So what I was, I realized, like I was putting two together and I was like, I, I am insane because if I decide to do this, then I am insane. <laughs> And so I, I started speaking up for myself and how I started doing it little by little. It was like the little things where I would tell somebody, I don't like the way, I don't like the way that made me feel. I don't like the way what you said made me feel. And it started getting bigger and bigger where I started to be like, I don't like the way you made me feel because of your actions. And that was okay. So God bless us. We'll be back on next Monday. Give them your email address so that they can um, contact you ladies. And then we will wrap up this show. Beautiful. You can, you can reach me at a townsend T O W N S E N D 714 at gmail.com. Email me for a book for consulting and coaching needs. I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. And you can email me at nomad jazz at the nomadic goddess. That's T H double -E, E nomadic goddess.com. And I am a blogger, so you can email me, and I do readings, so you can email, about me, email me, the Mercury Retrograde, email me about those things, too. <laughs> God bless. Thank you so much. We will see you guys next week. Go to our website, send our email address so you can purchase this book, Shadow Work, The Tree of Life, and Creating Your Chakra System. It is a beautiful book, man. Y'all should get it.